Hi everyone, I'm Eric and I'm Christopher. And we're Grow For Me 5B. Today, we're gonna show you how we edge our garden beds, we're gonna plant some hydrangeas, and do a little bit of fall cleanup. So Spring Meadow Nursery, which is Proven Winners Color Choice Shrub, has sent us out three pufferfish paniculata hydrangeas. These hydrangeas grow about three to four feet tall and wide, three to, maybe three to five feet tall and wide. They are hardy in zones three through eight. They bloom on new wood, and we are super excited to get them in the ground. I just want to show you these amazing root systems on this plant. I mean, they send out really nice stuff. Um, Considering, if you wanted, yeah, yeah, that's a one gallon. Yeah, if you wanted to order directly from them, it's greatgardenplants.com, um, but they have really nice stuff. We are going to put them here on this edge, which will get full sun because it'll get morning sun and then once noon hits it'll get sun from noon all the way till sundown in the summertime so right now we're here in the morning uh kind of mid-morning right late morning yeah late morning yeah so the house is blocking the sun but once noon comes along it'll start getting sun until the end of the day the reason we're planting them here is they are going to create a beautiful white poofy bloom that as you come up the side of the garden it's going to be beckoning you to the back and then as you round the corner you're just going to enter our garden eventually this will be large enough to be like branched up over them um, and that parkland pillar birch is never going to get any wider than it is but obviously we need more room and so lucky christopher gets to show you how to cut out a garden bed and how we do our edges all right, so edging is one of my specialties, at least I like to think so. Um, and again, one of our favorite gardeners from a local nursery told us as long as your edges look good and you've done most of your weeding, your garden's gonna look amazing. So I'm gonna be starting with my Gardener Supply Half Moon Edger. These are super sharp, love this tool. And they have a lifetime guarantee on them, which is yes, cool. Yes, absolutely, which we've used once because I managed to hit a rock and smash it. Um, the second tool I'll be using is my Loop Ho. This is a pretty inexpensive one. It's got a blade on both sides. I think people also call it a hula ho. Am hula I wrong? Ho. Loop ho, hula ho, weeding ho. That's a what weeding ho. Calls. It's a ho. It's a push and pull action ho. Um, the third tool I use once the lawn's mowed is the Ego battery powered edger. Um, optional, you could use a weed whacker turned on its side, but I like this because, well, for one thing, you don't shoot yourself in the face when you're doing the sideways weed whacker thing. And then the last step, is our trusty shrub rake from Fiskars. We have this in two sizes. I don't know how you could get a better rake and it's so inexpensive. Um, so important things to think about when we're creating this new edge. One, is it easy to mow around? As much as it seems- That like is the most important it for It really <laughs> is. If you make something that's too curvy, it's going to be such a pain in the butt to mow. Yeah, because you end up stepping in the mulch or you end up spraying the grass into the mulch. Exactly. And then, of course, we have to remember how big our plants get. We know these get three to five feet. So my plan is to give them breathing room of about two feet this way because they're hydrangeas and they kind of will get that great vase shape. So if I bring this out to about here, I think that'll be a comfortable start for us. And, and I don't think they're going to get necessarily full full size right away because they are going to be in more of a part they're not going to be getting the 12 hours of full sun that our like limelight hydrangea gets at the height yeah, of they're summer. getting like that the more of that six to eight where it's called full sun but it's yeah. not we're going to be at the time. lower end of full sun yeah and then of course we want to make sure that it looks good so it'll connect in here up a, against the corner of the stone part of the patio and i'm just going to round this out and connect it back to here in front of these raspberry cream gonfrina, which will be gone. Obviously, they are an annual. And then it'll continue to make this little undulating bed look that we've got going on. We love an undulating bed. Love an undulating bed. So one of the things I will do first, I kind of just cut in. All right, this is the size I know I need to make this. So let's make a little cut there and a little cut there, kind of like guide posts, just to get me going. Um, and when I do my edging technique, I guess, I step all the way in, which is, I think the tool is about three and a half inches, which is a nice depth. So I get that in nice and flat, and I pull back 
which gets sort of the lifting process going and it gives you a little bit of a slope to your cut. So that is very helpful. So here I'm just going to go step, rock, step, rock. You're doing great. <laughs> Speaking of rock, when they built our house, the backfill has so many little rocks in it and it's such a pain in the butt. Oh, this is getting easier to dig. That's good news. That is good news. Yeah, we don't want to dig too much of this part of the grass out because on this side of the house, it's one of our only kind of flat spots for walking. Um, it swoop, it drops off quite a bit here towards the hydrangea hedge, and that can be a little bit of a hazard, hazard if people aren't expecting it. So whenever we escort people around the garden, we always point that part out. And I kind of check and I make sure. I think that's going to be a little rough to turn that corner from the corner of, you know what I mean? I think it is. I think yeah, I have to. Yeah, so I think, yeah, I think you went a little too straight. So that's if we okay. did more of like a. The great news is if you mess up the line, you just leave matter. it. You just ignore it. It will be perfectly fine and grow back. But this is part of the process. Also, to make this line correct means less digging. All right, this is more swoopy. Yeah, we like a swoop. It's been such a beautiful fall. And then today it's going to be 80 degrees again, which is so random. We have three more days of 80. I mean, good for the plants we transplanted. Get them all rooted in. And then next week, if I'm not mistaken, it goes right back down into the 60s. I think when this video is posted, we're going to be on a really fun little proven winners trip. Oh, yes, we will. We'll be away. So that'll be cool. Can't wait to share that with you. Yeah, get that swoop. Ooh. Get that undulating garden bed going. Yeah, it's doing good. This is going to work. All right, I think that might do it. Step one. Now we got to pull it and double check. Yes. Let's... So what do you think is the easiest way to get the sod up? The easiest way, I think, to get the sod up is elbow grease and by hand because you, and do you cut it into smaller pieces before you pull it sometimes but most of the time you just do like a pure ripping if you get it so this is oh wait, i'm getting attacked by emily emily bronte i mean the soil's nice and wet which will make it easier very sure. very easy right here but what i like to do is kind of get your fingers up and under where you made that little kickback i'm gonna zoom in and, and the people want to know. Oh. And you kind of, it just sort of folds a little yeah. bit. And we have very sandy soil. And obviously as it gets wider, I will be able to take these handfuls. But this does always seem to be the easiest way for me. It can be easier to use a flat shovel. We don't have a flat shovel. Isn't that crazy? We should get a flat shovel. We should definitely get a flat shovel. For the amount of grass <laughs> removal we do, we should have a flat shovel. Yeah, and sometimes what happens is you just start peeling the edge away, and that's fine. Because then if you had a flat shovel, <laughs> you could come through and get it out. So I could put the camera down and help you at this point in time. Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> and scene. <laughs> Last piece. I know. So here we are finishing it up. I think the edge looks good so far. It does. And it seems to have a pretty nice curve to it. So then we go in with step two. The hula slash weeding slash loop. And this, in this case, honestly, isn't as necessary, but I put it on this angle. And then here's my outside of the edge and here's the bed itself. 
And you know, we like that kind of 45 degree angle as it gets towards the edge to keep the grass roots from coming in. So I just kind of rough it in that way. It's also good if you were pulling your sod and you missed some grass roots, because we know that those are stubborn and they'll come right Yeah, because that's a blade. And so it's cutting right now. It's also a lot, for some reason, this goes through rocks differently. Like it just moves them out of the way as opposed to the shovel, which gets stuck. All right, so that's step two. So I think what we'll do now just is get smooth our- Smooth that out with the rake. Yeah, we'll smooth that out replace and plant the shrubs. And once the grass is mowed here, I'll show you what I do with the electric edger and then finish up with mulching and the rake. Yeah, why don't you show us how you smooth out the soil with the rake? Because right now, see how it's kind of all, uh, there's footsteps and it's uneven. This is also good because then you can really see that line and what we've built. Another trick is the, the ruin your shoe trick. Oh yeah. And we got to smooth that part out right there, Christopher. Oh yeah, we will. But first I'm just gonna continue ruining the shoes. Does anybody else feel like they're slowly having more dedicated gardening shoes than regular shoes? So we have more garden bed than we need, but that's okay because next year this will just be filled with annuals. Yeah, something lovely. Yeah. And now that that is all carved out and kind of smooth, it helps to visualize. I mean, once it's all cleaned up, you can really visualize the bed better. And then you can go ahead and place those puffer fish. What and this think? is an Arctic fire dogwood. So this will be a nice texture. I think these might have to shift a little bit. Yeah, I think that needs to go a little further away. A little from further that. this way. Yeah, so a little bit of an offset triangle with these guys, and it'll be beautiful. So my favorite tools when planting is this gardener supply trowel because it's super sharp, has a nice sharp edge on it, and I love a kneeler. What can I say? So what I'm going to do is use my trusty bucket of biotone, and even though it's fall, we're still going to use biotone because it's really for the roots and it's not necessarily a fertilizer to get the plant going. I mean, these came right from a greenhouse, so they're fertilized within an inch of their life anyway. And they bloom on new wood. So even if they do produce new growth going into the winter, it's going to be cut off, right? Yeah, it'll be cut off. And the great thing about planting in a spot that isn't mulch yet is you can be a slob. I love that. <laughs> just not having to worry look at this sandy soil yeah that it's pure sand this is all backfill you know they dig a really big hole for these houses plus our area is is known for being very sandy it's probably a little too deep i like to plant things a little bit higher just because it leaves room for compost to go on top without drowning the root ball so again great roots yeah very nice just gonna get a little of that off the crown and uh there's been a little bit of damage from me tossing them around today but <laughs> they'll be okay they'll i be accept fine. full responsibility so that'll go in here then these will all get watered in and then we'll you know, top dress them with some compost. This is a particularly wet area. You can see we have a downspout from the gutter right there. Yeah, I mean, it's not wet because it's a wet area. It's wet because it rained all day yesterday. <laughs> but these will be happy there. Yeah, because paniculatas do not want to be in wet soil. So if this was a wet area, we wouldn't be 
planting them here. Oh, a little rockier. Not as friendly here. My goodness. Look at all them rocks. Oh, wonder if that's a birch root. Could be. Whatever kind of root it is, it's pretty happy. I'm just going to throw some of these here rocks in the uh, yeah rock. And some people ask why we have this rock around our house. I don't know if you want to talk about that a little, Chris. Oh, yeah. While I do you know, this. this drip line, which here, if I step in here, you can see what's behind the garden beds. This was Eric's 40th birthday present. This keeps the water away from the foundation. That's the little egress window over there. And then we plant in front of it. So nothing's ever planted too close. So even this birch tree is really like six feet or so away from there. And the fact that all this area out here gets irrigated and the sprinklers and such, those roots are not going to try and go into our basement. I'm excited to see puffer fish. It's got a really big bloom on it. I guess, isn't it? It's not necessarily an improved bobo. It's a different version of bobo. Yeah, it's a different version. I mean, what makes it a puffer fish is at the very end of its bloom cycle, I guess is what you would call it. Maybe I'm not using the right term, but it sends out an extra little like poof of a uh, bloom stalk at the end. Oh, well, that's going to be really fun. Yeah. I think that'll be pretty. Yeah, it's gonna be great. Well, we are in hydrangea heaven this fall. Once we get our let, after this, we're gonna do some let's dance sky views. And once those are in the ground, I mean, we're gonna have close to 140 hydrangeas planted. I think it might be exactly 140. We're gonna have to count. We're gonna have to do a count. He's gonna have to do a count. Wow, so rocky here. I mean, maybe rocks are uh, good for drainage. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's got to be the, the case. Yeah, I'm so impressed with the way that these shipped and the fact that these are one gallon. I mean, great garden plants is awesome. Okay, so we have our beautiful plantings done. Um, and now I'm going to go through with the electric edger, which is step three of Christopher's special edging projects. All right. Can you explain now. what the electric edger is? Like, show us the blade and stuff. All right. So it's got a little cover to it. It's got this little um, blade and a little protector thing. You can raise and lower the height on it. I think I have it at the highest level just because I find that's what I can handle. And also it has two settings. It's got one speed and then it goes to a higher speed. I always use the lower speed because if I put it on the higher speed, it kind of pulls you along and you lose all of your control. Um, and then where's that line, the drip line? The drip line is <laughs> here. It's right in here because oh, it was in front of those guys. Okay. It's also really deep at this point. So I, I'm not, I don't really have to pay attention too much to it. So I like to put it on the ground, tipped up just a little bit. And then I squeeze the two buttons and turn it on. Lower down. And then we drive along our edge. Ooh. Ow. There is a silver raised section, a little seam on top, and that tells you where the blade is. I didn't know that for the first year that I had this thing. And so, of course, what's bothering me right now is all of those grass clippings going into our beautiful fresh compost. Is there a reason why we don't do this before we lay compost? Well, no. 
No. <laughs> so you could do this before you like. Yes, you should probably do this part before you spare that. Uh... In my head, I was waiting until we did the lawn mowing. That's that's all that was. Oh, OK. And so then I just come through. The good thing about this shrub rake is it's not heavy, so you can just get the surface. And it does something to make this edge look so much tighter and cleaner. And we didn't mow this part yet because the grass is still wet from morning dew and stuff. And then you can just kind of tuck that pile of clippings up underneath an established shrub. <laughs> oh, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Um, it's um, a composting method. That's what I'm going to call it. Yeah. So the after Eric mows every week, I go through with the electric edger and the shrub rake, and that's it. That's all the maintenance we do. Usually in the beginning of the season, any places that have gotten particularly rough. Yeah, looking, look at that edge. Yeah, any place that gets particularly rough looking, especially at the beginning of the season, sometimes I just have to bring the hoe around just to reestablish the line. But for the most part, the summertime, you just do with the uh, electric edger and then There's a little chunk of puffer fish came off. And, you know, compost does get absorbed into the soil. It gets eaten and, you know, mixed in. So it does have to be replaced at least once a year. So. It's a little more upkeep than traditional bark mulch, but, but it's healthy for the soil. Um, it looks great. It doesn't turn gray or fade. And that's then, uh, probably the thing we like the most about it. It doesn't fade. The other really great thing about this in places where we've been composting instead of mulching for two or three years, when we are digging, you can see the difference in the soil. And if you want to make the switch from bark mulch to compost, you do not need to pull out your bark mulch. Oh, yeah. All you need to do top. is put the compost on top and that bark mulch will be gone in one season. So do not worry about pulling out any uh, mulch or compost mulch to replace with compost. You unless really you... can just put the compost on top of it and it will dissolve and take care of itself. Unless you have that awful rubber mulch, then you really need to take that out. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> rubber mulch you would have to pull, but any kind of wood or bark mulch, you can absolutely leave it put the compost right on top if you're making the switch. So what I'm going to do now is water in these puffer fish, and then we're going to work on fixing the edges around the blue point junipers that we planted at the end of our fences, because you know what we realized? You cannot mow around them. Can't and do that's it. one of our rules. And I think when we transplanted those, it was just too hot to deal with it. And now, <laughs> now's the time. What we have here is a trio of new hydrangeas from Proven Winners. This is Let's Dance Skyview. This is a new hydrangea in the Let's Dance series that's a cross. Uh, it's a hybrid between a macrophylla and a serrata. So it's bred for extra cold hardiness for the buds and repeat blooming in the spring. So what that means is this type will set its old buds for next year. Right here you can see them, right? So extra hardiness here because it's crossbred with a mountain hydrangea. And then next year, it is also bred to repeat bloom. So you're kind of guaranteed blooms, hopefully. And it's also bred to be, you know, growable anywhere in zones four through eight for a USDA grow hardiness zone. So that's anywhere from Michigan to Florida. Right now, the blooms are pink. But if we were to acidify the soil or add aluminum sulfate, they would turn a bluish shade. And they um, get a really light blue, beautiful sky blue, sky blue color. Yes, hence the name. Um, but they are always going to have that little bit of pistachio green in the center of the bloom. And did I already mention that they uh, grow two to three feet tall and wide, Christopher? You did not mention that. So they're a nice compact hydrangea that can go on the front of a border. And that's exactly where they are going to go. We have three of them to go right here in kind of picking up the drift of our tottering by gently's and then into our walkers low catmint and we'll have a spot next year year here for some annuals 
uh, which is super exciting because it's great to change up your garden a little bit. Look at our verbena venariensis. It is still covered in pollinators. There is, wait, Eric, slide, slide, slide. Look, 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 look. It's the last monarch. Oh yeah. I mean, we're a little far north for this monarch. They, you need to get on the move to the south, please. Look at the color of that. Yeah, so if you love pollinators and butterflies and all those beautiful garden creatures, Verbena venariens, this is where it's at. It does reseed itself, but not tremendously. And I'd recommend if you want to grow it from seed, you'll get earlier blooms in the season. If you just leave it to reseed, you won't get blooms till later in the season. So we do a mix of both. So what I'm going to use again, my favorite gardener supply trowel, biotone, and I'm just going to plant them up right here. Beautiful. And then we'll mulch them up nice and fresh with some compost. So before I pop this in the ground, I just wanted to show you the beautiful roots on this. And these again came from Spring Meadow, which if you want to order direct from Spring Meadow, it's greatgardenplants.com. So it's a beautiful specimen. Biotone in the hole. And in we go. All right, so the Let's Dance Sky Views are in the ground. They are watered in and mulched up with compost. I'm just kind of rinsing off the leaves because I got some compost on them while I was spreading it. The leaves are so pretty. I know. It's a gorgeous shrub. Pilos. You know, we don't normally have the best of luck with big leaf hydrangeas, but because this is a hybrid, I'm hoping that we're successful. And yeah. Eric, have you done the count officially on how many hydrangeas we have? I have not. I still think we're under 140. My guess is currently 140. But these are most likely, pending any late season sales, the last hydrangeas for the year. Yeah, this is it. Let's stand sky view. The final hydrangeas installed for 2023. So far, we say that. We say that, but you know. I'm pretty sure, though, because I can't think of another spot we'd ever in. <laughs> That's the problem. We have to take out more grass to put in more plants. Okay, so the zinnia patch has certainly run its course. I've done a little bit of research on how to properly save seeds from a zinnia. I'm going to take seeds from both the purple and the lime, mix them up, and then I think we should name the variety 5B's giant mess <laughs> and figure out not a giant mess. It's going to be beautiful, but who knows? So I'm going to take this whole seed head. And remember, over. everyone, there's more than one way to garden. Yeah. So if, they, if you have a different way of doing this, let us know in the comments. But So underneath all these dried leaves are the seeds. Okay. Where's the seed? This little guy here. Oh, here we go. That's the seed right there. So I think I'm going to just put a bunch of these blooms in this plastic bag. And then I will get rid of all of the chaff and other stuff later. But for now, I just want to save some of the seeds so we can grow 5B's giant mess next year. And then I'm going to go ahead and clean these up because they have run their course. They've been beautiful in this spot. But we have three winterberry gold. Very uh, heavy gold. Very heavy gold winterberries underneath here that would probably like to see the sun next spring. So this spot will likely be a beautiful flush of these tiny green leaves instead of zinnias next year. Well, here we are finally finished with our crazy busy day. We got the compost off of the driveway finally. I get to use the garage again. That's a bonus. We got the lawn <laughs> mowed. We have some fresh beds made, edging touched up in some places hydrangeas planted you collected zinnia seeds yes i collected zinnia seeds and now we're just kind of relaxing here yeah. in the hydrangea room so yeah thanks for joining us today again i'm eric and i'm christopher and we're grow for me 5b thanks for growing with us <laughs>